Notice how dark it is along a bank, then all of a sudden it gets whitish. That's where the beaver are going in and out under the bank here. And they they travel so much that they taken the uh, they made it white by exposing the bottom and all the soot and everything and things like that are gone so so we should have something there if we don't catch it up here this uh, we found another lodge and there are beaver tracks here and here's some cut but it doesn't look like there's any uh, fresh activity going up inside the lodge so what I'm going to do right here I think with this conibear you see how deep this is here set this channel, put a dive pole, uh, see what happens. So. Right here, this channel that we're in, you can see how my foot comes up and goes down the channel. What we're going to do, we're going to set it close to this uh, root system here, so that'll choke him down when he wants to come through. That'll, that'll choke him down, and uh, make him go through there. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to tie this off, and then find me a, a log put across the uh, top of this conibear so that it'll make him dive underneath of it and go into the conibear there, hopefully. You know, so. Like I said over there, I think there's just maybe one beaver in here, so if this set doesn't work and one of the other ones does, you know, you can't say that this wasn't a good place because if you catch him somewhere else, you won't catch him here. We're going to try it. We've done it before and with good results, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, I want you to notice when I walk out of this channel, it's slippery, so you got to watch it. See, that's the channel that they run on there. So I'm going to find me a log and put across there. See you later. my dive pole. Found a nice big one here, so. We'll extend this right over the top of the ton of bear. Right over the very top. Like right in this root system here. And just lay it on this bank. And there he's got a dive. When he dives, we hope his nose touches something and he doesn't remember anything else. came here yesterday you remember and uh, they were having some problem with some beaver in this pond so we came and set three conibears we're gonna mosey up here and see what we can get see what we got if we got anything I 
little one here. Small beaver. Coming out of the den. Look like that hole there, I found it yesterday, remember? Not too small though. Not a small one, nice size one. So. And that turtle been after him. Reset these kind of bear. I'm just got to treat them. Make him want to break them. Gotta get the, the lock up there. Safety catch. Like I said yesterday, I like to keep the trip wire off to the side. And these on the bear stabilizers really, really handy. Wired up. trick here if you want to sex the beaver before you skin it there's no way to tell visually if it's a male or female by looking at it but right above the, the caster here if you'll take and squeeze right in there push down as far as you can squeeze your fingers together you should feel the male uh, organ right right in there going up through it will be like a pencil or something in there and uh, this one happens to be a, a female. So we're going to 
throw it in here and get back. Do something else. All right, see you later. Okay, folks. We're over here at one of my customers. And they're complaining of some beaver. As we look across the pond there, <clears throat> see a hut. There's the hut. And that's an older one, but it looks like they put some new sticks on it. And we see some stuff floating there. Then up on the bank, from here it looks like there's some chewing, beaver chews. So we're going to take some uh, 330 Belial's and some 280 Belial's over there and see if we can't trip one of them up. So, catch you later here. Okay, folks, I'm back. Just so you know uh, what the layout looks like, I'm on the opposite side of the pond that I pulled in off the road. And up there's the house. I don't know if you can see it through there. And looking north, you see a little path that goes out to another hard road. Then as we go around looking toward the south we see my truck now that's called handy trapping carries little material the least amount of distance that you have to okay folks we're over here on the other side of the pond now where the lodge or hut or whatever you want to call it is and uh, I want to show you here. If you look down in there right in front of that big chewed stick, you'll see, if you can see it, a little shiny area where they've been going in and out of the den. And I'm going to go ahead and put a 330 there so they swim into it and uh, hopefully take one of them out and then over here to the left of that excuse me I got my tripod feet hooked down here you can see that chewed stick there's a little trail faint trail coming up to the bank where they've been coming up and uh, chewing on this big tree here you know, they keep it up, it won't be long till that's down. So the landowner wanted these beaver removed. So we'll get back. Okay folks, now you're looking at my, what I call, a baited set. I've got, um, if you can see that limb hanging straight down in front of the trap it's a live limb I put some food beaver food lure on it and the 280 is right there then when we switch over to the lodge you see those two pieces of wire coming together the top and straight down probably two feet under the water where the channel is what goes into the lodge which is right there okay that's number two now I'm going over here and put the third one in at an auxiliary lodge is what I call it I don't know if they're using it or not, but we'll see. We want to make sure we got to clean these beaver out for the customer. Have a good day. 
Okay, now we're at the, what I call the auxiliary lodge here. Um, I do see some activity a little bit, but not as much as the other lodge there. So right down in the water, straight in front of you, is a white trail going in and out. I've been used a little bit, not real heavy, but I'm going to go ahead and set it anyway. So tomorrow when we come back, we'll check all three and see which one produced. Have a good Okay, folks, we're back over at uh, my customer uh, pond here where they were having the beaver problems and uh, we're checking the traps today and I see that we had some luck so we're going to um, turn the camera around and let you watch me pull the trap out and take it out of the trap and um, reset the trap back for some more. Now just to let you know that when you're doing um, beaver control in a pond you're not selective with the size of the animal you take so there may be some uh, young ones that get caught here also and the main goal is to remove the beavers out of the pond period that's one and all so hang with us here as we get ready to remove this animal out of the trap and show you the technique We can see the snapping turtles. Matter of fact, one just flew out of the hole just as I was taking this one out of the trap. So, I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, snapping turtles have been eating on this one overnight. And um, I'm going to take it out of the trap. And as I was lifting the stabilizer, trap stabilizer, out of the the uh, channel there, another beaver shot out of the, the lodge and took off. So I'm going to turn the camera off, take this beaver out, and reset this trap back. And we'll see you down the road here.